So her and Godzilla, they like, they got a thing going on. Yes, they do. And the reason you're probably watching this video is to better understand this weird phenomena. Today, we will go over all the evidence and clues that will give us a full understanding of how this relationship between Mothra and Godzilla really works, including how burning Godzilla functions. If you enjoy our content and haven't subscribed yet, hit that red button below so we can continue to fill your feed with really fun kaiju content. And go buy some merch and posters if you haven't yet. Before we begin, there's one word we really need you to get familiar with, symbiosis, which is defined as a sort of interaction between two completely different organisms that will affect both species, sometimes in a positive way. If this sounds a bit outlandish, then guess what? It isn't! Some real-life examples include the beneficial symbiosis between the Nile crocodile and the plover, a bird that provides free dental care to this dude and in return feeds on the leftover flesh. Pilot fish swim dangerously close to sharks, but they're here to feed off of parasites leaving the shark squeaky clean and also feeding them at the same time. The point is, there are a lot of even more crazy real-world relationships out there, so having a giant lizard form some sort of mutually beneficial alliance with a super-powerful moth isn't really something to be surprised about. And according to the MonsterVerse lore, these two go way back. Number 1. Symbiotic History Both Godzilla and Mothra are very old kaiju, in their own ways. If you saw our Battle Face-Off video featuring Mothra, you would have learned that this kaiju has the ability to reincarnate and keep the memories of each incarnated Mothra, meaning that over the past millions of years, Mothra and Godzilla have known each other for a very long time, even if Mothra perished repeatedly. In a few clips from a couple MonsterVerse films, we witness cave paintings drawn by ancient civilizations that depict Mothra's close alliance with Godzilla, always flying next to him when facing another foe. But why exactly did they become friends or allies? Remember, this type of symbiosis is a result of two organisms mutually benefiting from each other's existence, so these two had to share a common interest in order for them to form a bond. The answer could be found in both of these animals' moral compasses. Mothra, being a benevolent titan, has a positive regard for humanity, always seeming to be a protector of some sort, and even going as far as refusing to willingly kill humans even if provoked. If you didn't know, Monster vs. Mothra actually had an additional symbiotic relationship with humans themselves. Mothra would protect these groups of people, and in turn, these people protected its egg. But back to the G-Man. Godzilla quite honestly couldn't care less about a few squashed humans, but it is his role to keep a balance in nature, often fighting other kaiju that could potentially end the human race, thus bringing peace and order to the entire planet, something Mothra also wants. In return, Mothra has helped Godzilla in combat many times, sometimes going as far as sacrificing herself for Godzilla, all for the greater good. So we see now that both of these titans benefit from having each other as allies, but there's more to this. As mentioned earlier, this relationship has lasted for a long time. So much, in fact, that both of these titans started to develop certain physical traits that further strengthened their bond. Number 2. Shared Physical Attributes after millions of years of coexistence, Godzilla and Mothra eventually developed bodily traits that helped them cooperate more effectively. Let's begin with communication. In this type of mutualistic symbiosis, it was imperative for them to be able to know each other's whereabouts at all times, in case one of them got into trouble, which in many of these cases, it was the G-Man. For this reason, it is possible that over time, both Godzilla and Mothra tuned themselves to understand each other via sonar. In Mothra's case, she is capable of amplifying sounds that Godzilla can actually understand. In 2019, in the film Godzilla King of the Monsters, we see Mothra emitting her God Ray ability while hovering above Godzilla's possible location. After some acoustic scans, it was evident that Mothra was actually communicating with Godzilla at that given moment. This attunement to each other's frequencies had to be the result of millions of years of evolution instigated by constant cooperation. But there's more. A lot more. 
take a look at Mothra's wing patterns. It is mentioned by official sources that these rounded shapes found on the tips of these wings are actually meant to resemble Godzilla's own eyes. In the real world, it is theorized by scientists that real moth eye patterns are used as an intimidation mechanism to ward off predators that look at the moth as its next potential meal. If this logic is migrated into the MonsterVerse, then Mothra couldn't have slapped a better pair of eyeballs on her wings. As we can see, this symbiotic relationship runs deep within these kaiju. But did you know that Godzilla has other types of symbiosis with other kaiju? If you're enjoying this video, please don't forget to like this video and most importantly, subscribe! Number 3. Parasitism Not every type of symbiosis is a positive one. The definition that we gave earlier actually applies to one type of symbiotic relationship known as mutualism, where both parties are positively affected. Other types of symbiosis include commensalism, competition, neutralism, and finally predation and parasitism. We are going to focus on these two. Parasitism is where one animal feeds on the other and the latter is negatively affected. And predation is obviously the relationship between predator and prey, where the predator benefits and the prey, well, it's dead. Sound familiar? Yep, by this definition, Godzilla and the Muto share this type of symbiosis, especially with this one, the Muto Prime, who fills up for both of these categories, implanting eggs in Godzilla specimens and having them feed on the Gojira until it is fully depleted of radiation and consequently dies. This form of detrimental symbiosis should not be assimilated with Mothra's. With her, it's the complete opposite. Number 4. The Thermonuclear State If we go back to the events that happened in Boston in 2019, you'll recall that Mothra was the one who gave up her life protecting Godzilla while granting her so-called life energy over to Godzilla, allowing him to turn into this monster. But does Mothra really need to die in order for Godzilla to turn into this thermonuclear state? The answer? Maybe. But we simply don't know yet. We aren't going to pretend we know the answer for this. But what Mothra can do is provide Godzilla with help, while she's alive or dead. In this case, Mothra sacrificed herself. And it just so happened that she died very close to Godzilla, as if this whole stunt was almost meticulously planned, allowing this said energy to be absorbed through Godzilla's receptive skin. Here we can see that he starts glowing with a reddish-orange hue between the scales, signifying that at some point this energy will have been completely absorbed by Godzilla, turning him into burning Godzilla. Perhaps the most notable evidence of Godzilla's symbiosis with Mothra can be seen whenever Godzilla emits its most powerful weapon, known as a nuclear pulse. This is a burst of extremely superheated nuclear energy that builds up on the dorsal plates, which is then released on a spherical-shaped radius. It's safe to say that absolutely nothing is completely safe from this explosion. The interesting part is that we can see Mothra's wing patterns emitted in the form of visible light, suggesting that 1. Either this particular wing pattern evolved to resemble Godzilla's burning state, or 2. Godzilla's genetic composition that builds up this thermostate evolved to resemble Mothra's wing pattern. But there's even more! Listen closely to the sound of this nuclear pulse. Did you hear that? That noise that was emitted by this pulse also resembled Mothra's cry. So what about Godzilla's anatomy allows this to happen? Again, as mentioned earlier, symbiosis does not stop at basic coexistence between two species. In many cases, mutualistic symbiosis triggers genetic transformations that over time resemble the physical attributes of the symbiotic partner. In other words, Mothra and Godzilla's abilities and attributes evolved to behave like the other. This sound in Godzilla's nuclear pulse is further evidence that Godzilla and Mothra could possibly emit sounds that mimic one another, which is why they understand each other. Today we learned that apart from sharing a mutual and beneficial relationship, this duo has proven to be one of the most efficient, communicative, and powerful alliances in this kaiju universe. But are there other powerful dynamic titan duos out there? Let us know which one is your favorite, and stay tuned to find out which one could potentially be the most powerful.
Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you in the next video.